My name is Lahi Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, my name is Dana Silvestri. I'm tuning in from Massachusetts, uh, Worcester, Mass. So it's about an hour from Boston. Awesome, awesome. So let's dive into it. I don't know where to start. I want to talk about daily routine. Uh, this is one of the biggest mysteries that I think a lot of entrepreneurs um, have the most challenges with because we're, we go from uh, having a job that they force us to be there at a specific time because they're paying us the salary. So they're disciplining us. But when you get into entrepreneurship in the business world, it might be a little bit difficult for people to create that routine. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so actually I had a corporate job out of college for, you know, two or three years. So I was at, you know, kind of working on their terms. You know, I had to be in the office at eight or nine. So I had to come up with a routine to do that. And for a long time, I would just wake up. Um, I, would work, I would go work out and I'd rush to the office, get there right on the dot at nine. And, you know, and I was kind of just living that way, just based on my reaction and kind of like in an animal mode of, you know, my fight or fight. And and um, I stopped that recently because um, – once the pandemic happened, I ended up leaving that job. I was let go, thank God. And um, I developed, I mean, I had a routine before, but I developed a routine that worked around my schedule. It worked around like when I talked to my clients, it worked around what I have to do on a daily basis. And my routine, I have a whole ebook. It's free on my Instagram that goes into every single detail, but I'll, you know, give you a quick glimpse. So my, my, um, you know, I wake up, I used to wake up at 445, but I cut it, I cut it up an hour because it was getting a little ridiculous. So I wake up around six. Um, I do a form of mindfulness and that can be like a breathing technique or like um, a meditation. So I swap off on that and that really gets you because you wake up in kind of a state of a lot of people wake up and they're like, oh, I don't want to get up. I want to snooze my alarm. So you have to come up with something that you enjoy more than that thought of snoozing your alarm every single day. So that's what I did. And um, I, I listen to like Joe Dispenza a lot. I listen to a lot of YouTube um, meditations and stuff like that. So that will get your, your mind, st your mind state all set for the day as well. And also if you don't like meditation or you don't know how to do it, um, people can reach out to me or you can just go for like a walk and that's a form of meditation as well. Clearing your mind, exercise is huge because exercise releases a serotonin into your body. This is a feel good long-term chemical and it also releases endorphins, which is like a natural born painkiller. So there's ways to get quote unquote like natural highs. And when you do that and you find out those ways, that's why people don't like exercise at first and they grow to like it then you're going to develop, a, you know, a routine that you really enjoy and everyone's different. Another thing that I do, and it may sound a little extreme, is I do cold showers. And um, cold showers is good because you have to calm yourself down. You take a couple breaths, calm your nervous system down. Then you go in. I don't start off cold, but, you, you know, take a warm, warm shower, do your thing, turn it to cold. And then you have to calm yourself down. And that's very good because I do it just for the mindset. So if I can do that and train my brain to calm down while it's in that environment, then if I'm going into public or I'm giving a speech and I'm having that same thing, you know, that same feeling because it's very related, then I, I, I've been there and I've done that and I'm able to do that with my mind. So I use a bunch of these tricks in the morning that really set up my day. Another big one I didn't want to miss on is gratitude. A lot of people, you know, are going through life always focusing on in the future what they want or they're focusing on the past of what they used to have. So you want to stay present and you want to focus on what do I have right now? What I do is I make a list of 10 things every morning I sit there, I write down 10 things, and it could be, actually, it's, it's present things that I'm doing right now, or I also write down I'm thankful for things in the future that haven't happened yet, because that's a good way to grasp that feeling, and then I close my eyes down when I'm looking at each one, and I feel what it's like to feel that, so then when that time comes, and it will come if you take continuous action, you know, I've been there, and I, I've kind of deserved this, so that gets you, it's all about getting to your, you know, how you feel in the morning, and that starts your day off in the right routine, and then right at nine o'clock now, I start my day, I'm feeling energized. You know, I'm not running to coffee at 7 a.m. to fix it. Because if you run to the coffee, then you, I'm going to have another one at 1 o'clock. I know that. So it's a whole process of different routines um, and habits that I use in the morning. I love it. Love it. The cold shower, I've seen Tony talk about that. I've seen Grand Cardone don't talk about that. They're all a little bit on the crazy side. <laughs> I've tried it, but man, you know, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not for everybody. I tell you that. Um, you almost give yourself a big shock. Make sure that there's somebody in the bedroom so if in case you pass out, you got <laughs> someone that's calling 911. Do not try this at home. If you do, do it at your own. I, I love it. I love it. But here is my question for you, though. 
how do you get that routine started because logically what you said makes sense yeah. everybody should have 30 40 minutes in the morning if you don't have 30 40 minutes in the morning i don't know what you're doing could that job could that business because if you don't get 30 40 minutes to yourself then what the hell are you working for it doesn't make sense right so that to me is like one of those things but how do you get that started do you just wake up one morning and you just do it because i feel like it's easy what you just said made sense but why more people are not why they don't have a, a morning routine yeah so it's it's way deeper than that so when it all changed for me is when i started to find out my why which is the reason why i'm why i'm getting up in the morning and that's tied to a vision and goals if you don't have that basis then it doesn't matter if you do your routine because after a week you're not going to do it anymore because why get up if you don't have a reason to so this ties into you know setting goals finding out your why which is I have a couple exercises, like it's the seven layers of why it really gets into from your head into your heart. And you find out why exactly you're, you know, basically why you're here right now, like why are you living? What's your reason to be here? And once you know that, and you get emotionally involved in that idea, and then you set goals around that from, um, you know, three months all the way through 20 years, and they can be goals that you don't know how to do as well, and as well as goals that you know how to do. Once you have the whole platform, and then every single day, you know, you review those and you journal them down and you plan that down then you, I guarantee you, you'll be getting out of bed every single day because you're thinking of that vision. So you need, you can't, I mean, it's very, very hard, to, like you said, to get out of bed without having a reason why and maintaining that. So that's the aspect I use. So I, I was able to get that foundation down, understand that, get, you have to get emotionally involved in that so that you, you, know, you want to get out of bed and your body's involved in that. And then that's when the magic happens. And then in the sense that you said, it's, it's, it's all about progress. It's small steps. Like when I first... I was getting up at eight and I would be at my job at nine. And then slowly I set my alarm for 30 minutes earlier. And I started doing that, doing my meditation. And I thought it was stupid at first or whatever, my mindfulness. Um, and, and, you know, I added another half hour. And then before I knew it, I was working, I was waking up three hours earlier and I was able to have just doing this routine. I was able to maintain my energy through the whole day. And then when I missed my routine, even though I slept more, it was kind of like I missed something out. And I was like, oh, I want to get back to my routine. So you have to get you have to get that foundation down first, with, which a lot of people may have, you know, a foundation down, but it's, it might not be their own. It might be other people's goals. So a lot of the times it has to be something that you truly want. And a good thing is mindfulness and these exercises and the ones that I teach can help you understand what your why is and what your goals are. Because if you're doing someone else's and you're just going through life, you know, in autopilot, then you're really not going to have a morning routine because why, why would you, you know what I mean? I agree with that 100%. How do you go? So the, 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 we are going deeper, I guess. So how do I create my why? Because I know when we when we do the Think and Grow Rich, I mean, we just did a course on it. But I know when you write down your goals, affirmation, all of that stuff, you will, your why gets, you get closer to your why. But what if my why is I want to make five two thousand dollars extra every single month? Do you think that's a good enough why? No. No, money, money is never a good enough why. Uh, based on society, we're, we're attracted to money and we're taught that, you know, you want to make, a, you want to be a millionaire. But the way I think about it, instead of being, I want a million dollars, what can I do to impact a million people? If you can provide a service that can impact a million people, I guarantee you, you'll have more than a million dollars. So what you can do is um, you don't want to set goals in the state of mind that you're thinking about the money, really. I mean, you can. But you want to do exercises leading up to that. So like, I teach people a certain exercise that gets them in a mindset that, that helps them set the goals that have that emotional response to that. And I keep saying emotional response to that because you want something that means something to you. So I, what I'm trying to say shortly is I have exercises that get you in a state of mind, like visualization exercises and stuff like that. So then that as soon as you do that exercise and then you start writing, I have people write everything down. I don't like typing stuff. As soon as you start writing, then the magic is going to happen. And when you write it down, it gets into your nervous system as well. So you get emotionally invested in that. And then that's when, that's when that magic happens. And that's when you really start thinking like, this is possible. And it is, it is a big mindset change. Like, um, you know, a lot of people tell you there's, there's boundaries. Like when I was growing up, I always thought I wasn't smart enough. And I always thought I had a cap at how much the amount of money that I could make. And then I started following like the right people and the right, the right coaches. And then they told me like, you're limitless. You're only stuck to what you think that you can do. So once you get rid of that, just for a couple minutes or whatever with these exercises, and you're able to, in that state of mind, that isn't, you're not always in it, you're able to write that all down and then you can go back to that. 
And then every single day, what I do is, because you can't just do this once, you have to look at this on a daily basis and you have to ingrain this into your subconscious. So what I do is I actually, I write it all down. I come up with a mission statement um, and each, a bunch of categories. I record it on my phone and I play it like once a day, like listening to headphones. And I just sit there and I like read it. And I take like, you know, it takes 10 minutes. That 10 minutes on a daily basis. And then as I think it's been about three years since I wrote, I started that. And now it's like, all I can think about is my vision. I'm like, basically you, you end up being, you fall in love with that vision. Like if it's a woman that you see at the bar, it's really like all you want to do is help people in the sense and that you know you can do it and that you're not going to give up on that. And that's the point you want to be at. And the problem is a lot of people don't get to that point. And then, you know, they're 80, 85 years old and they look back and like, why didn't I just try that? I agree with that. I think Napoleon Hill talks about the burning desire. So a lot of people have wishes, dreams, and they have these aspirations or wants. But I think if it's not a burning desire, and, and that's kind of goes back to what you said, because if you have the burning desire to accomplish something, or, you know, it's, it's way higher than wanting something, then I think people have super power where they can go with five, six hours of sleep. Because whenever you talk to a lot of people, that are like employee mindset, not that they're bad people, it's just that their routine has been that, you know, they go to sleep at, you know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock, and they go till like 7, 30, 8 o'clock before they have to go to work. So when you take away from comparison, like eight, nine hours of sleep to like five, six hours of entrepreneurship, they're like, wow, I can never do that. And I'm like, no, you can't. You just don't have your burning desire together. That's, ex that's exactly what it is, having that burning desire. And then not only that, the faith in yourself and God or whoever, whatever you believe in combined, and then you're able to take action on that. And that's, that's the big thing. But a lot, of, like I said, a lot of people are, they, it, a lot of people don't even set goals, first off. So if you're a ship and you don't have a map to get to your destination, you're not going to get there. So you just, you know, you're floating around the sea going in all the wrong directions. The wind's going this way. You're just, that's where your life's going to be. And then, and then first off, that's the first issue. Then the second off is, like I said, they set other people's goals. Like, you know, I'm in a corporate job and I want to go up the ladder and my goal is to get up the ladder and do what the other person in front of me is doing. That's, maybe, that's, maybe that's true and that's okay. And, but a lot of the times, everyone is so unique in their own way. And we just need to bring that to the surface. And there's certain exercises, there's certain, you know, people out there that can help you do that, that have done it themselves. And that's the whole point of this, having faith with a burning desire. I agree with that 100%. So here's my other question for you. When it comes to entrepreneurs, do you feel like, because I know in corporate world, they do the coaching, they bring salespeople, they have marketing people, they do some of that stuff, but I've never been in a corporate world, so I wouldn't know. But in a real life entrepreneurship and business ownership, I know coaching is a big deal. I think you having guidance or have someone that could walk you through the, the just give you the shortcuts. Or, 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 or kind of maneuver around obstacles easier than if you were just done it by yourself. I'm pretty sure everybody could figure it out eventually. But why do that if you could do it faster? So talk about a little bit about coaching. What is, why do we need a coach? Yeah, um, everyone needs a coach and everyone needs a, a good coach because they've been there and they've done that. Never listen to someone or get advice from someone that's like a field entrepreneur because they're going to tell you, oh, I've tried that. It didn't work. And they're going to try to put you down in that sense. So you want to, first off, you want to find coaches that have, that are similar to you and everyone, you know, everyone's unique, like I said. So find someone that's similar to you in a similar situation or that was in a similar situation and, you know, has credibility or has, was mentored by someone or coached by someone and find that right person. That's the first step. Cause you don't want to, you know, there's no point of finding the wrong person and then learning from him. But a lot, a lot of times I find a lot of people don't want to invest in themselves. And that's the biggest issue. Like, um, society saying like, it's okay. I, I understand to save money. Like I save money, but a lot of my money that I save goes in back into myself. And like you said, like, um, I'm in that mastermind class with, uh, Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins, and they have 60 years of experience, you know, combined. And they're giving you the tricks and tools and the knowledge and the mindset, but you have to apply it obviously to give you that 60 years so that I can save myself 20. So when you think about it in that sense, okay, I'm paying this fixed amount for this person's basically their mindset and the tools that they learned over 60 years, it's like a no brainer. It's almost priceless because if you have faith in yourself and you have that burning desire, like we mentioned, then it's worth it. But if you don't have that vision and that confidence and that burning desire and that faith, 
then you're not going to apply. It. And one of the huge things nowadays, and I, you know, I went to college and, and, and everything. A lot of people learn, but they don't actually apply it. So they're jam packing books and knowledge into a head at college to get an A on that test. But then, you know, two years later, you forget about it because you've never actually applied it in real life. So a lot of these coaches, and they're going to teach you exactly what you need to know. They're going to teach you how to train your mindset right now. And then they're going to take the good ones. The good ones will take you and show you how to apply that right now so you actually learn. And that's, that goes back to it. Applying it is everything, and knowledge is power when applied. So if you can find the right person that has that knowledge or is currently has been in the situation and has that journey and you know their story and they teach you how to get to the core and how to apply that, then I would say it's worth, it's worth the money. And a lot of coaches out there, they give you, you know what I mean? A lot, they give you refunds and stuff. They give you 14, you know, seven day, 14 day, 30 day refunds if you want. And they're not here to sell stuff to you. They're not here to hurt you. They want to impact people. That's why, that's why a lot of entrepreneurs are in that business. Cause they know, they know what it's like. They, they want that freedom. They want you to have that freedom as well. I agree with that. So what is your definition of a mastermind group? Because I've been comparing, the reason why I asked that question, I've been comparing notes, and that's exactly my topic when we did the course, and I was teaching people how to, what does a master, what's the ultimate goal of a mastermind? But I feel like it has taken a different form of what Napoleon Hill was credited with the whole entire idea of a mastermind group. So what is your different give us an example of two mastermind groups that are a little bit different that 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 you think will help other people because my definition of mastermind group is a little bit different and i want to i want to kind of uh bounce those ideas by you and see what you think of those yeah so i think napoleon hill's definition was i'll paraphrase it but two or more people um with a positive ad to to a definite end um a group of that something something along that lines um, my definition is, you know, a group of people that are like-minded and it depends what industry you're in. They're working together to collaborate and share their experiences to get you through obstacles. So it's really having that base of those people around you. And when you have that base, you kind of think in a different way. You, and like Wal Walter Waddle says in the book I'm reading, The Science of Getting Rich, he says, think in a certain way. So when you have these people around you and compared to just myself, like writing things down, they're going to throw ideas at you. They're going to give you a different experience. And then all of a sudden you're going to be like, wow, I never even thought of this. And you're going to get so much out of that because that can drive you through your obstacles, drive you through your mindset and drive you through any issues you're facing. So um, a couple different groups of masterminds is like, for example, I have a mastermind running. It's, it's weekly video calls on Zoom and it's two to 12 people. Um, I leave the calls. I go in there. I have, I use the same um structure that napoleon hill had i have uh, i'm coached by uh in the bob proctor program so i also have resources there as well um so we go in there we get everyone together everyone's like-minded it's application only so i can't have you know i mean some guy in there that's like 17 years old and then someone that's really experienced because then the whole mastermind kind of gets screwed up so it's people that are like-minded growth-minded people and i go in there and i give a little structure and we all work together we we go through our wins we go through our issues we're having and then through group thinking and through collaboration we just pound through um, the issues and get some solutions to it. And I've been using masterminds before I launched this for, you know, I think almost a year now and it's really helped me. So that's why I want to share that with people. So that's one form of it. And you can, you can do this with your friends and stuff, but you have to make sure you have the right people in it. That's it. That's the whole thing. They, you have to have, know, have people that are growth minded that understand the process and all that. And then the second, the second one that I have, it's called the uh, momentum mastermind. And, it's a full day virtual event that goes through a whole schedule and there's anywhere from 10 to 25 people in there. And I use like the tools that I learned from uh, Dean Graciosi, Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, as well, as well as the accountability um, tools that I create and the strategies that I learned. I do stories. I help you find your why, your mission statement, uh, set goals with those exercises that I was telling you so that, it, that they're your real goals, uh, find, give you uh, tools, how to save money and time. Um, so many different things in there that can change your life. And I know it works because it changed mine and it's also tools that they use. So it goes back to the whole thing. Like, you know, do you want to be in the same situation five years from now, or do you want to try this out? And there's a money back guarantee on this as well. So why not? I mean, that's how you want to think. And that's the issue. So there can be, there can be video ones that are easy. It could be with your friends or they could be uh, coaching ones as well. And like, it could be virtual. Like right now it was virtual. And then eventually I'm going to bring it in person as well and have a bigger group of people. And then out of that, you also do, you also network and you, you don't have to network. You can make, you can make lifelong connections through this. 
And that's like the beauty of it. It's so it's so overlooked. And I know that you know the power of masterminding as well. But those are those are some examples of the mastermind. Oh, and and oh, I actually I actually had a mastermind group that I created, and I actually I don't know if I should say, I, I I mean I don't know what you call it, but I kind of dissolved it because I felt like people were in it, uh, and I think it was more money driven versus mission and goal driven. And it got to a point where it's just the harmonic balance wasn't there. And I said, okay, great. And I didn't have to say anything. I just stopped sending the reminder to the group of like eight, nine people that were on it. And in about a month, it just dissolved itself. And I pulled out two people from that group about five, six months, maybe later. And now we got a mastermind group that I actually look forward to getting on the call with these coaches because we come up with some ideas. Listen, and, and we don't even have to talk about business. It's just that Thursday, 3 p.m., I know I'm getting on the call. It's like my fuel uh, gas station where I'm going to get fueled up, where I'm seeing what everybody else is doing, while we're collaborating, what's happening. But well, we're all aiming towards one goal. We do have one main goal, but we do a lot of different uh, – collaboration where we're talking we're like oh so and so has got this or so and so figured this out or i figured this out what do you guys think so we're like bouncing ideas off each other and it's a cool one so that was all guys and then i made another one that's all females i even love that even better because man fem you thought guys get ser serious these females are vicious man they are on top of their game i don't know how they do it but they're on top of the game so to me it's like if you the first principle of law of success, 1,100 pages. Napoleon Hill talked about mastermind group first. There was a reason why in 1928 when he published it, or even the 1925 version, both versions of the book start with a mastermind group, and that's what it is. So, And I know that's a big book. A lot of people are not going to read that. It's way too heavy. You start with thinking, go rich. But I just want to bring the, the importance of it that even Napoleon Hill – knew that mastermind group was very important. That's why he put it in the first chapter. So he's definitely there. So how do people find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at the Dana Silvestri, or I also have my website. It's the Dana Um Right now on my Instagram, I have my free ebook, which can help a lot of people. If you want to delve more into my morning routine, my habits, and just, I throw in resources into that as well. So it can help people out. And I really want to provide that value to them. And second off, I have a 15 minute strategy call. So if you feel like, you know, this resonated with you or anything, or you just want to talk to me, we hop on the phone, talk about your goals a little bit. Maybe you're a good match for the mastermind. Um, so you can find me on those locations. Those are some free materials that can really help you out. And also you can find me on Facebook as well at the Dana Silvestri. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man. I'm, I'm coming across just the last seven days. I'm coming across a lot of uh, coaches that work with Bob Proctor. It's so funny. <laughs> I know, so, and now that I'm thinking about it, you're like the sixth one, man, just this week. It's so cool. And it's such a close uh, circle of people, and everybody knows each other. So I love it. It's it's so cool. And yeah, Bob Proctor is a, is a good guy. I like him. Um, I like his concept of a stick man. That was oh, yeah. one of the, that was one of the, I think that kind of opened up my, I had a paradigm shift when I, when I saw this stick man. It's free. He's on YouTube. I, it wasn't part of a course or anything like that. He talked about it like 10 years ago. It was a video. I looked at it. Even though he's done a bunch of new videos with it, with animations, you know, I like the concept of stick, man, which I don't know why they're not teaching that in school, man. Like, that should be so elementary. Our country, our world would be a better world if they just teach those stuff in school. I don't know. Don't get me started on the education part. I get, I get really... <laughs> I get really intense. Also, also, he teaches the um, three ways to make money, like the M1, M2, M3, time for money, investing money, multiple sources right. of income. That's also not taught in school, by the way. But right, yeah, yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you could talk about it endless, uh, I just think, why is it uh, thinking Grow Rich not standard in schools? Like, it's one of, probably one of the cheapest books. You can get a thinking Grow Rich book. The 1937 version is free. It's in public domain. You could just go on Google and download it. Literally, it will take you maybe a minute to download it and to start reading it. If you really want to spend money, you could go buy it on Amazon for $8. Uh, 
you could get a used one for 99 cents. Like, it's like the cheapest thing that I could think of. I don't even think you can get it. I've never been to, I haven't been to McDonald's for like maybe 10 years, but I don't know what the Big Mac, maybe somebody could tell us how much, how much is a Big Mac. Like, I think it's cheaper than one meal at McDonald's. You know what I always say? I say um, you can go to a bar and get a $15 drink, or you can buy a book for $15. It's the same price. And a lot of times, if you buy one drink at the bar, you're going to end up buying more. So that's how I see it. I'm like, okay, I'm buying a book or a drink at the bar. Like, you need to get in that sense of that growth minded sense that you want the book more than that drink. I mean, it's okay to have that drink, obviously, when you, when you celebrate and you deserve it, but you don't want to get in that habit. I mean, I've been there on the weekend doing that, and I, you know, discovered this whole, this whole, self-improvement and entrepreneurship and just helping others. And it's like, you kind of fall in love with the process. I know that you can relate to that. Oh, totally, man. When we started two and a half years ago, um, for all, for almost two years, we only talked about thinking go rich, uh, only on the book. So I think um, there's so, it's like, it's such a close environment, people where you get the enjoyment talking to people because you know, they're thinking just like you, you yeah. know, that you guys are in the same wavelength. I don't know if you got that in the Bob Proctor's, you know, mastermind guru. Where everybody knows what everybody's thinking. They know that they have to be on this wavelength. And I think that's a big deal. And I think people should be, you know, doing that. We are putting something out there where we could teach people how to create their own mastermind group, just like you said with your friends. I think we're making it, we're making it dummy proof. Where you could literally follow the process and do that. And then little by little, you get out of that mastermind group and they join your mastermind group. But by the time they get to your mastermind group, they know what the process is. Yeah, no, I think I think that should be something that everyone's doing, uh, regardless if you're you know working as an employee or an entrepreneur or you're just not employed at all. It's something that you can do. And if you have, you like I'm so important to have the right people though. Cause like you said, your whole, it is one or two people in there that have a negative mindset or is turning down the goals. And it could ruin it could ruin the whole mastermind but that was the thing that i lacked when i was really learning was the support and that foundation from people so if you can find a mastermind like this or you can create your own or even like i i'm working on creating my own facebook group with people like that and the huge thing is especially for millennials and everyone is that we have the internet everyone forgets about this it's not just i always go on facebook and everyone's posting about the pandemic and all this negative stuff there's a lot of communities out there that you know are sharing with each other and caring about each other and have growth minded mindsets that can really help you. And so I think just delving into all that is a game changer and taking like a big thing for me was taking my, my mindset off the news and off all that negative stuff and just focusing on the right areas. And as you do that, you know, as you focus your energy on that, you take action in those directions. And then if you do it on a daily basis with progressive steps, which I say a lot, you, before you know it, you look back a year and you're like, holy cow, like, I've made this much progress. This, this isn't so bad, but in the moment it can be tough. It can be overwhelmed. Yeah. But, I mean, it is what it is, you know, and that's what I was going to ask. And, and, and I lost the train of my thought. I was going to ask when you talked about faith, I was going to ask how often are you tested on your faith <laughs> on daily basis? Because a lot of people think that just because you make a lot of money, you're not tested and everything is happy dandy. Everything else good. But I feel like, we are tested on constant basis. We just maybe not talk about it all the time. Yeah, I mean, the way I view it is every day I wake up to a new day. So if I have a horrible day today, and it happens a lot, <laughs> but that's based on my blueprint. And then I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to start off with my morning routine again. I'm going to start with that fire. Or if I have a really good day again, the next day, again, it's day one all over again. You know, you have to maintain that passion. And this is like, you know, this is a lifestyle. This is something that goes on for my whole life and that I'm prepared to do. So I'm ready to, you know, wake up and, and help people and solve issues every single day. Because once you get complacent, that's when your momentum drops. And then you can find yourself, like, skipping your routine. Then you skip, okay, I'm just going to go do this today. You know, now I'm going to go to a bar. And then before you know it, you know, that progresses as well. And that compounds. And you could lose You could lose a lot of progress and a lot of things that you've been working for. So I think – I think Jeff Bezos said that as well. He said he, he pictures everything like it's day one. So I think that's a great mindset to have. Love it. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us. Hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more videos. And whenever you're in town in LA, let us know if you have a full studio. Whenever you want to do a live session, we'll be able to do it. Thank you. I hope you have an amazing day and amazing rest of your week. You got it. Talk to you later, brother. Bye-bye. Talk, talk to you. Bye.